Welcome to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. I hope you're having a great day as we continue to celebrate all the amazing people working so hard to make this such a great place to live, work, and play. In fact, we're going to celebrate one Coast recipients here shortly with Adele Lyons from the Coast Chamber. But before we do this, I just wanted to share a couple of things that popped up in my history book. Uh, this first quote is from a guy named Edwin Land. Edwin, Edwin Land. You may not know who he is, but he was the inventor of instant photography. He was born back in 1909, back in uh, 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 May of 1909. But he said this along the way, an essential aspect of creativity is not being afraid to fail. You know, we talk about that all, all the time on this show. People who we talk to on this show and, and various quotes that we share on this show, they always say it's important to fail in order to find success. And we're not, we don't see failure as our friend. Failure is something that we can learn from. But here's the guy who invented instant photographer saying that an essential aspect of creativity is not being afraid to, to uh, fail. Um, and then I, I noticed that, of course, William Shakespeare you know, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day. I could go on from that. I remember so many of these things that we had to learn in school just just still stuck in my mind. But he died back in 1616. And here here we are still being inspired by him. A Hollywood legend and diplomat Shirley uh, Temple was born back in 1928, May of 1928. In fact, Shirley Temple along the way said this, be brave and clear. Follow your heart and don't be overly influenced by outside factors. Be true to yourself. You know, we tend to worry too much about what other people think. I think sometimes it's sort of good to be authentic and not worry about it. And if I had to go look back on my career, the one thing that the one thing that allowed me to sort of stand out there at times with strong editorial views or major corporate change or whatever is I believed in what we were doing. I felt like I was being true to myself, and I did not let the outside influence uh, or the outside factors influence me. And uh, I think that's a kind of a common theme in a lot of the people that we have on this show. But that's what Shirley Temple Black said, and I couldn't agree more. Okay, without any further ado, let's move over to my friend Adele Lyons. She's the CEO of the, of the Coast Chamber of Commerce, someone that I admire and have worked with in the community for more years than we will than we will let you know. <laughs> so anyway, how you doing, Adele? I'm good, Ricky. Good morning. No, uh, it's good. Hey, listen, one thing I would we'll, we'll get back to chamber business here in just a second, but one of the things that I always admired about you is that you would take the nieces and nephews that were special to you on. The chip trips, I guess, of their choice or your choice. I'm not exactly sure how you did it, but you've traveled all over the world with them. Do you still do that? Well, my last one finished up last year. He's finishing up his freshman freshman year at Ole Miss right now. So, uh, so I wrapped up the Annadale uh, tour, I guess we'll call it. But um, it was great fun. It was a way that I wanted those kids to know. Um, about the rest of the world and see it and understand that when you're when you're someplace that things aren't wrong, you know, if you're they're not driving on the wrong side of the road, they're driving on a different side of the road, that the pizza in Italy isn't bad because it doesn't have a big pile of cheese on it. It's different. And just seeing the differences and how the world lives and places that are you know, so old and visiting churches and uh, seeing the architecture, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I wrapped that up. Now they want an alumni trip, but I told them they're on their own. <laughs> we we <laughs> well, can do it, but uh, I'm not paying. <laughs> well, Adele, to give people a sense of how far you were willing to take these travels, to give them a sense of where you've taken them to. Yeah, so my my first nephew, we went to London and we took the channel over to Paris, um, which was which was great. He loved it, you know, did all the traditional Paris um, and, and London stops. Um, second one, we did Italy, we did Florence, Rome, and Venice. Um, I have some friends going to Venice soon, and um, you know, I told them Venice is a whole different place at night once the cruise ships and all the all the other tourists leave. And it's kind of almost a quiet little village that you can kind of wander around and just really enjoy. 
Um, also, uh, then, then we went, I went to uh, Vienna, Prague, and um, we really enjoyed that went, and been to Barcelona and to Normandy in France. Um, and we went to Berlin as well on that, on that third trip. Berlin was huge for those kids, huge to just, you know, they, they know the story. They've seen World War II movies. They've heard about the Holocaust, been to the Holocaust Museum in D.C. So to be in Berlin and see some of those sites, I think, was really important. And we, we did go to a concentration camp, which was, you know, kind of hard, but I think probably the most important lesson, they, a thing they could have seen to learn a lesson while we were there. Well, uh, Nor Normandy yeah. as well. Normandy, France, going to all the battlefields, uh, the cemeteries, um, the, the way the French still respect the Americans for what we did 75 years ago is unbelievable. People tell me thank you. And, you know, certainly I, I had nothing to do with that, but it was um, they really love Michael really loved that. Yeah, Ann and I felt the same way, you know, that, that perspective that you're talking about. When we were in Croatia and we went through Bosnia and we were amazed at how people viewed us and how friendly they were to us and how they treated us. And uh, I'll never forget that. But, you know, I was so lucky early in my career to have the opportunity to do a lot of traveling for, you know, Roland sent me all over the country for training. And then I was involved in efforts with Knight Ritter and traveled like crazy, got to see just about every Knight Ritter newspaper along the way, working on corporate projects. And I gained such a great perspective about how, where Mississippi fits in. And I often talk about it on the show. In fact, I talk about how Mississippians who get an opportunity to travel, not only do they gain a perspective, but they bring with them, I call it a burden. And and maybe I, maybe that's an appropriate term for people who have a perception about Mississippi. The burden is to help them overcome that burden by by showing them who we really are. And I right. think, you know, I I love the spelling myths and working on a corporate level gave me an opportunity to do that. And then, of course, later in my life, the opportunity to travel to other countries. And and this show, even, uh, Laurie Jackson, who's an independent missionary who works in Ukraine, to have the opportunity to check on her, in with her regularly about the people of Ukraine and what they're going through and the volunteer efforts that are happening there. You know, when you talk to her, it's almost as if it's like, okay, a hurricane hits here in the aftermath of the hurricane, how all the the nonprofits and volunteers come together and all that. It feels the same way when I'm talking to her, except that it's a, a, it's a, a Katrina that's hitting every day. Right. But, the, but the, you know, they're, they're Christian. They love their families. They love their communities. All these nonprofit organizations are coming together. All these volunteers are finding ways to do their work. It's inspiring. And what you're teaching your kids, and I think this is a lesson for everybody, is that perspective, gaining perspective, lets us re realize that Mississippi is not the center of the universe and that the world is incredibly small. It's incredibly small. Most people love their family, love their communities, want the best, and they may speak, speak a different language but that's just the way that's just the way it is. No matter where you go in the world, this that sense isn't there. Yeah, I I was lucky when I um, was involved with the small business incubator and I was on the national board um, that I was able to do some international travel with them as well. And it was in 1996 I went to China, and it was still very much, um, you know, the internet wasn't huge then, and um, you know, so you didn't have sort of these outside influences. And at first, I, I really couldn't understand why everybody was staring at us, you know, but um, heads taller, you know, physically heads taller than everybody there. Um, I had a friend of mine with me that had red hair. They, that was weird to them. Um, but to see, you know, to go to Beijing, to go to Shanghai, um, to see that the way that I was treated at the conference of being an American, uh, being a female kind of threw them a little bit, um, but they, um, you know, just so respectful, so like appreciative. And to be talking about entrepreneurship and small business assistance programs in China um, was something that they, you could just tell, crave yeah. and wanted to know more. But then there's, you know, there's the government um, there. So, um, 
yeah, that was that was very cool. And then, you know, we did a family trip to Croatia as well with my parents several years ago, where it was just all my siblings and my parents. And, you know, kind of going back to the old days where you piled in the wagon and drove, you know, to Disney World or wherever. Um, but you're older and wiser and you don't fight over silly things <laughs> anymore like you did. But um, yeah, I mean, travel to me is the best thing you can do, even if you just go to New Orleans and wander around and see what's different there. There's a lot in your own backyard you can learn, too. Um, you don't have to get on an airplane always. Yeah, listen, uh, I, I envy Ann because the Mangin side of the family, there is a there's a statue of her great great grandfather Charles Mangin in France. You know, she they can go straight there, and then the history from Croatia is incredible. Right. You know, one generation removed. So, yep. awesome stuff. When we come back on the other side, we're going to talk about the One Coast Award. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. Aunt Adele's tour. That that, that was that was a fun conversation about perspective. And what's interesting, you know, uh, Robert St. John, the restaurateur, entrepreneur that's so popular in Mississippi, he's on the show all the time. He's become a really good friend, but he takes his family over to Europe and does this long mm-hmm. tour. And um, he falls in love with Italy. And you know the rest of the story. He's doing these yeah. regular tours to Italy. Right. And, and now he added Spain and all. Well, you could do the same thing. You could have <laughs> Aunt Adele's tour and uh, and go put tours together for people. That would be that'd be fun. You'd you'd be good at it. You're you're really good at it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so look, the One Coast Award so important. We you and I have talked about it many times. The opportunity that we have to recognize leaders. The opportunity we have to develop leaders. We can't do enough recognizing, and we can't do enough developing because the key to our success going forward whether it's just every day making, you know, raising the bar of coast of Mississippi or whether it's responding after a major disaster, we need all the leaders we can get. And the chambers, uh, both the the Jackson County Chamber, the Hancock Ch- County Chamber, the Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, Chamber, and the Ocean Coast Chamber have always been committed since this was handed over to you guys from the Sun-Herald to stay focused on recognizing leaders. And, you know, I mean, it never gets old because you get a new slate of leaders that you get to recognize. And then you always look at the list and you say, wow, I can't believe that person wasn't already <laughs> recognized. Yep. You, you say it every year, don't you? Yep. Every year it's like, wow, this person hasn't been recognized. But we get such um, an extensive list of nominees, which is is important. I mean, we want the whole community represented. It is a tough job. It is an unbelievable job to be one of the judges. And, um, you know, they get their information. They get their score sheets independently. They, they do their work independently, send it back in, and we, you know, see how the numbers shake out. And it's, it's always interesting. It's always, um, you know, a little bittersweet because people who I've done great work, aren't part of that 10. It's just the numbers game at some point. But, um, and you'll see people you know, and you see people you don't, you've never met, don't have a clue who they are. But what a way to be introduced to them and what a way to introduce them to the community if they've kind of been behind the scenes. Yeah, this year was actually the first year in a while that I haven't attended the the event. But the, the thing that reminds me so, so much of, why you need to do it is when you see the pride of those who recognize, you see their families and, and business associates to coming together. You see how you know their peers recognize them. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful event in that regard. I mean, it's a great celebration in terms of the event. But as I've often said, and I'll say it every time, the, the reason we started these awards, the reason why I think we've had success continuing them, is because we're holding these people up as an example. I mean, I mean, we're we're almost in a way we're using them. We're saying, look, God, we're so happy you're getting the recognition. But more important, really, is the chance to hold you up as an example so others can see what it is that you're doing that cause you to get recognized, and we want them to aspire to do the same kinds of things in the community. And that's the beauty of what we're doing with the One Coast Awards. Yeah, it's uh, always a packed house, always a lot of folks that come to that. It's definitely a feel good. You know, you leave there with so much hope and so much um, enthusiasm for the community, for the people who live here, for the work they're doing. Uh, You know, we do it early in the week on a Tuesday. So it's kind of a great way, way to start your week, to start your day. 
um, you know, the people are all just so genuine as yeah. well. And they're just people you, you want to sit and visit with and talk with and you're happy to see. Yeah. Well, look, um, let's, let's kind of look at the list of people and, um, we, we'll, we'll do the community leaders first. And then the, we have the, okay. the under 40 top 10 under 40, uh, yeah. next, but right off the bat, you look at the list and Angel Myers McArath, uh, been on the show many times. I mean, you may not know this, but she literally lived in the same neighborhood as Ann and I and the kids. And she babysitted for us when she was <laughs> young <laughs> and then she goes on to be a lawyer and uh, and now the dis- district attorney over on the uh, uh, the eastern side of, of coastal Mississippi. But what's what's inspiring about her is to have watched the pain that she went through with the brain cancer her her daughter had to experience and how she came out on the other side of that. I think a better person, a better district attorney, and giving back in ways she would have never even thought she would be doing uh, when her daughter was first born. But um, Angel, uh, you know, right out the bat, an example of someone you think, wow, <laughs> she should have been recognized probably years ago, but she was too busy in the trenches to even think about it, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. You know, someone um, nominated her from the community and, and- you know, exactly that, just for the work she's done. And, and you might say, well, gosh, that's her job. But let me tell you, she goes over and above her job and the things that she does in the community, the things, um, you know, she's so um, adamant about child abuse and domestic violence cases, um, you know, yeah. just, uh, and what a tough job is that to deal yeah, with those no, it's, but she, Let me tell you, so, the, other thing that, yeah. the other thing that sticks out when we're together is she's tough as nails. She 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 believes in revenge and redemption, but she is a tough DA when it comes to issues around children, et cetera. And by the way, I had the opportunity to attend the uh, Jackson, excuse me, Singing River Health Systems had a a symposium around mental health, and she she was uh, one of the moderators, and it was you know we focused. Uh, they say I say we, but they focused on teen suicide and lots of issues facing lots of people these days. And she, her ability to to empathize with the panelists and those who are raising questions during the, that was just so extraordinarily well done. Her life experiences plays out in moments like that where she's able to turn on the dime. And, you know, she just believes so, so much in what she's doing. Just a very impressive person. So, well, as a matter of fact, that's what she, in the form she filled out, her top skill that helps her lead is her empathy. What she yeah. Says, to understand where people are coming from and engaging them with them in a way that will help them succeed. Understanding others' perspective. So that's yeah. Exactly. You know, she, she, she realized that. Talk about living yeah. by example. Living by yep. example. If you if you really want to understand what a phenomenal leader looks like, then go do a little research on Angel uh, Myers McArath. You'll be glad you did. She's leading by example. Someone that I mean, everyone should aspire to emulate. Anita Brooks from ASB Marketing. Um, talk to uh, me about that. Yeah, I've known Anita for a long time. She's been involved with the chamber. She's been involved with the Lighthouse uh, Business and Professional Women's Club. Um, she, it's a small business owner and where she finds the time to volunteer. Uh, I don't know, because that's hard when you're a, a small operation, if you're not doing business, you're not making money. Um, but she finds a way to do it and it's really helped her grow her business and grow herself as an entrepreneur. Um, very organized. I think that helps her as well. Uh, but she's just a young woman. Uh, I say that she's probably as old as I am, but, um, you know, we're still young. Uh, so she's just a go-getter and has really been a force in Jackson County uh, for a long, long time. Beth Wilson from uh, the Gulfport School District. Gulfport's been super innovative for a number of years. Tell me about Beth. Well, you know, Beth is um, involved in the in the school with so much they have going on with how, you know, they're set up academically and their curriculum. Um, and so Beth works with trying to bring business and business partnerships to the students and to the Gulfport school, particularly at the high school. Um, and it's proven to be hugely successful. Um, you know, you, 
you go into Gulfport High and just the building alone is different. And then you hear about the curriculum and how the students uh, choose a career path and uh, start really down that path and learning and having ex di really direct experiences with people in the community. Um, and so she's got her hands full, got her hands absolutely full with students and the work she's doing, but she also stays involved with the community. Again, I don't know when some of these folks find the time, but, you know, they make the time because they know it makes a difference. Hey, we had an opportunity to do a live remote there a few years ago and to really see what they built as it relates to entrepreneurship and understanding business. I mean, a live retail area, a commercial grade kitchen as good as one one that Emerald would be proud of. Yeah. Auto repair shop that looked like, yep. you know, it could be at a new car dealership and, and, and you know, uh, media, the, the technology media side of this was just incredible. But Super innovative stuff and focusing on the reality that non-traditional education is, is a real key uh, to helping people get fully employed. Not everybody's a four-year university uh, kid, and uh, this is an opportunity for kids to, to really understand what do they want to be when they grow up long before they get out of high school. Just an awesome program. Well, and I think her, the, her title, her official title, title is Career Pathway Specialist. Um, that kind of says it all. I mean, she's about how can she take these students to find their path in their career while they're young and, um, you know, can take on additional training and move forward. It's, yeah. it's, uh, hey, when we come back, we'll, we'll uh, pick up from there. And uh, Ben Burnett, Dr. Ben Burnett from William Carey University, what an impressive leader he is. He's also a drummer, which he and I connected on that on that front. Uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about that and continue our One Coast Award recipient conversation. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. I have uh, Adele Lyons, who's representing all the chambers along the coast, uh, Jackson County Chamber, Hancock Chamber, Ocean Springs Chamber, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community, uh, excuse me, Mississippi Gulf Coast Chamber, we know as the Coast Chamber, where she is CEO, on this collaborative effort around recognizing One Coast Award recipients. And went to break, we're working our way down the list for the community leaders. Uh, and I mentioned Dr. Ben Burnett, what an impressive leader. You know, you know, William Carey came to Mississippi Gulf Coast to play ball, and they are investing heavily uh, ben Burnett is serious about what he's doing, and uh, you know he has a musical background, a drummer, a band, former band director, but he's been a terrific leader at William Carey, hasn't he? Yeah, he really stepped in when Dr. Tommy King retired. Um, they've really grown so many of their programs, grown their community exposure. Um, you know, he's just the right man for the job, certainly, and a big part of the coast, you know, I think. Um, it, it used to be everybody thought William Carey had his bird, but I, they absolutely have a true presence here on the coast and are recognized, you know, in that education community as being a huge part. And he's driving that. So next one on the list is D. Christopher Daniel. Tell me about him. Yeah, Chris Daniel is with the uh, he's the assistant district attorney um, in the second district. So here in Harrison County, um, you know, similar similar to Angel, he's taking on the, the, the cases and the tasks that um, got to be hard. He's also um, been involved, been a military, um, active duty military. And so from the you know, defense of the country, um, received a lot of awards for, for his military work. Um, also involved with the Patrick Christian Pirate Excellence Foundation for Education. Again, another person that has a full-time job, I mean, full-time, and is finding a way to help fund education and different projects in Ash Christian for that excellent school district. Okay, the next one on my list, in fact, I had Mary Graham on uh, recently in the last week, actually, and we kind of got up to speed on what's happening at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, such an innovative organization. Over 51% of the students there are in non-traditional education but the next one on the list is Aaron Riggins. Uh, yeah, so Aaron has recently moved to be the uh, president or the vice president over the Harrison County campus, previously having been very involved in workforce development. So I don't think you get to step out of that arena at all. And like you're saying, workforce development is huge. The non-traditional student, the pathways. Um, 
Erin's been involved with the chamber as well. Again, giving back, finding time in her community. Um, she's been involved with Leadership Gulf Coast, been a class member, full of energy, just full of energy. I mean, you just, you're around her and it's just bouncing off of her. Um, just somebody who's, I think, an up-and-comer, certainly in the community college, and uh, will be here to stay for a while. The next one, Jamie Miller, the uh, he's the CEO of Gulf Coast Business, Business Council. I have a long history with Jamie. We got to know him after Hurricane Katrina. When I went to Alabama and led the oil recovery efforts as a volunteer leader for, for uh, Governor Raleigh, Jamie actually came over and worked with us and led one of our teams on that effort. So he's uh, he's got a great a great background. When you think about his time at uh, Department of Marine Resources leading that organization and then going to MDA and having the opportunity to work there as legislative liaison, among other responsibilities. I mean, he was, you know, he had the right background to come in as the CEO of the Gulf Coast Business Council. Uh, what more would you want to say about him? Well, just lucky that Jamie works here in this building. I just had a long conversation with him last week about a couple of things that are going on that where the chambers, um, you know, working with the business council. They're doing a lot of uh, regional forums where they're bringing folks in to have longer and larger conversations than they would have just during their membership meeting. I know they have one coming up with um, education and working with all the superintendents. They have their state of the coast economy coming up. So really trying to bring the business council um, to the business community and having the community learn from that, be a part of that. What's been great about what he uh, and the business council has been able to do is keep involved the CEOs of the major you know, companies with their chairman being the CEO of Ingalls. And the, the, over over the course of time, they've they've stayed involved. And, you know, Rowling used to tell me it's great to have number twos and number threes involved but when you have the CEOs involved in, in something like the Coast Business Council, which is a regional organization, they have the resources and the ability to really help make change happen. And uh, I think Jamie's done a terrific job of kind of keeping that 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 uh, machine moving forward. Next on the list is Jimmy Ladner, Hancock County Tax Assessor. Yeah, Jimmy Ladner has been the tax assessor there for a while and really um, – you know, that, that's an office that, you know, everybody knows who the tax assessor is. you got to go pay your taxes. you got to do that every year. And you think, gosh, that's an easy job. You just sit there and collect money. Um, but really very involved in the reevaluation of the taxes after Hurricane Katrina, getting everything back up and running so that there is commerce, there is dollars flowing, there is taxes being collected, um, you know, keeping up to date with the systems and the processes He's been involved in both the state and the national tax assessor type organizations. So he, you know, is keeping abreast of what's happening in other states so we can keep up with that or keep ahead of that. Um, so he he's super nice guy. Couldn't meet a nicer guy. Um, we were happy to have him, really happy to have him. And then in the and this is the tenth person on the list from the community. That was this one, so I'm gonna hop back up. Say it again. We miss Tom Wade. We miss Dr. Tom Wade. Oh, right. Of course. I skipped right over with Tom. Sorry about that, Tom, from yeah. Gulf States Engineering. Well, I, I can't let you uh, forget Dr. Tom Wade. He's the Gulfport uh, Chamber President this year and doing a great job. They just had a great event last week. Um, he also, besides his full-time job with Gulf South Engineering, Gulf States Engineering, um, he teaches at South Alabama in the College of Engineering. But one thing that um, I think is so cool about uh, Tom Wade is he recently got a patent and he's been working on these really fire suppression processes and systems. And um, this he's, he's come up with a way that he thinks with this patent and once he gets it to market is really going to change the way you fight wildfires, which we're seeing more. We don't see so much here, but you see more and more and, um, you know, that not only the forest burning, but people's homes, people in danger. And so it's pretty cool. I'm uh, looking forward to kind of watching and seeing how that goes. For Dr. Well, Wood. that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, Congratulations, cool. uh, Tom, on that kind of, uh, of success. I had uh, actually Shannon Killardy, who's over just under 1.2 million acres of forest land 
a U.S. forest land in Mississippi on, on my outdoor show about a week ago, and she talked about how they're using drones now to do their controlled burns and all. It's a, the technology used today in that regard is very, very significant. And then the, the, the last person on the list, Melissa. Melissa Schnorn is the director of community relations at Singing River Health Systems. And um, she's been involved with Leadership Gulf Coast as a class member, now a board member, um, really working with all the folks and the employees and the staff um, to, to bring them into the community at Singing River Health Systems to make sure that the community's getting what they need, the hospital's staying engaged, the hospital system's staying engaged. Um, I think the mental health program that you talked about, she was deeply involved in getting that organized. Um, so, you know, with a large health system that's operating in two counties, um, Harrison and Jackson, having somebody like Melissa involved, um, she's really, she's got her work cut out for her too, certainly. I think they're doing a great job. I'm so thrilled that Lauren St. Pay is leading that organization and Shannon Wall, who used to be at the Sun Herald, we yep. all have great relationships with. And Melissa, you know, this team is doing a fantastic job of outreaching into the community. I, I just can't, I mean, that particular event, that mental health event that I mentioned, it was so expertly done. Every aspect of it was thought through and people were inspired to have been there and they intend to make a difference and they are making a difference and it's exciting to watch. Yes, absolutely. So good group. I think you'll enjoy talking with some of those folks. Yeah, I can't wait. We're going to be we're going to be working our way down that list. Uh, Cammy's in the process of reaching out to them now. But congratulations to all of our community leader award winners. So let's shift gears. Uh, we'll uh, we have a little bit of time left, and then of course we have a, a final segment, which will be about six minutes and fifty seconds. But we won't short shrift this group at all. Dr. Yeah. Anthony Lopez was the first name on the list in the top ten under forty list. Yeah, Dr. Lopez uh, runs uh, Clear Family Chiropractic, and he's been involved with the chamber as well when he first uh, got his business started, a great way to get out and meet folks. But he really, um, he's been involved with Coach Young Professionals as well, which you know is a great place for young folks to kind of get started in their uh, chamber or philanthropic or community-minded um, start of their lives. Um, Dr. Anthony really sees the chiropractic as a way to ease people's pain and help them live a full life. You know, if you're can't walk, can't get around, having back pain, um, and he's got a growing practice, he just moved to a larger facility. So super nice guy. Well, congratulations to Dr. Anthony Lopez. When we come back, we'll pick it up from there with the Dale Lyons and finish our list of those top 10 under 40 for the One Coast Awards. We'll see you after this. Welcome back to the Ricky Matthews Show from the Citizens Bank Studio. We have Adele Lyons, CEO of the Coast Chamber, with us, and we're working our way through the One Coast Award winners. Real quickly, the post-legislative briefing was rescheduled, and it will be now Tuesday, May the 14th uh, at the Golden Nugget. Doors will open at 730. Program begins at 8. And uh, you can go to the Coast uh, Chamber website if you want to learn more. But four senators will be there to help with the debriefing. And should be a great event, always is, especially this year, given it was a jam-packed legislative mm -hmm. session. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, so back to the list. We just recognized Dr. Anthony Lopez from Clear Family Chiropractic. Now, uh, Caitlin uh, Cruthard from Horn. Yeah, Horn CPA, uh, you know, big involved with a lot of disaster recovery, but they're also just a CPA firm as well. Uh, here on the coast that Caitlin is the manager for the for the office here in Gulfport. She's been hugely involved with Junior Auxiliary and their Fill the Bus program, providing school supplies for students as they get back to into the school year. They're, um, they'll be doing that again so that they're ready for August when the kids get back to school. And she's leading that. She's a real up-and-comer, certainly. Awesome. And, okay, next on the list is Heather Sanders from uh, Cadence Bank. Yeah, Heather is a community lender uh, with Cadence Bank. She was one of the early members of CYP and helped get it started. Um, she worked for Renaissance Community Loan Fund as well, so she not, knows a lot about community lending. Um, she participates with the bank in some of their programs where they're out talking to folks about, you know, becoming bankable and participating. Um, a lot of minority groups don't 
or don't trust banks very much and, and why that's a reason to get in there and let your bank help you. So she's really um, very interesting, very cool, a lot of energy, too. Hey, one of the uh, one of the things I enjoy about my conversations with President of Mississippi Power Company, Anthony Wilson, my good friend, is their commitment to the community. It plays out in so many different ways. But I was pleased to see Kayla Moran, uh, Moran Griffith recognized. Yeah, I was real proud as well. Kayla's one of our former employees here at the chamber. Um, worked in our for our, led the coaster and professionals and leadership Gulf Coast. Um, she's in the communication department there working with Cindy Duval, who is a ball of energy and a great teacher for these young folks. Kayla's been involved in the Gulfport Chamber. Um, she's got a lot on her plate uh, as well with a young family, but she's constantly giving back, constantly um, being involved in the projects that Mr. Power has going on throughout the community, which is, you know, many all the time. Um, so Kayla's one I think we need to keep an eye on as well because she's going somewhere. So from uh, Let's Go Gulf Coast, Kelsey Kills next on the list. Yeah, the Let's Go Gulf Coast is um, really about early childhood and getting in the community. Um, they, they've done a lot of research, uh, evidence-based about nutrition and physical activity of students uh, being funded by the Gulf Coast Community Foundation or receiving some funding, I should say, from the Gulf Coast Community Foundation. Uh, I had just met Kelsey through this project. And I think you're going to see a lot more of her as well. Next on the list is Reagan Robinson from RPF Media. Uh, Reagan also I've known in the past. She's a part of our leadership Gulf Coast class. But um, Megan, uh, Reagan, I'm sorry, was also um, in the military. And she talked about being involved in the 2015 Syrian refugee crisis and where she worked to help set up temporary housing Um you know, folks who had to flee the country and are in Germany and trying to reestablish their lives is really a touching story. And someone, when you see her, she's just this petite little female and, you know, but she's she's got a lot going and she's super strong with a lot of work ethic. Um, you'll see her, I think, go places as well. Next on the list is Sawyer Walters from the USM Foundation. Well, if, if you don't know Sawyer, you, if he walks in a room, you will know him. He is somebody, he is, well, he'll talk to anybody, chats up a storm, ton of energy, uh, went to Southern Miss, is happy to be um, representing the Southern Miss Foundation in the community. He's really somebody, I think, uh, getting involved in Long Beach and some of the projects they have going there. And then Steph, we've got three more, Stephanie Moran from Keesler Federal Credit. Yeah, she's uh, been involved with, you know, a lot of them start with Leadership Gulf Coast, which is great. Um, and so uh, been involved in the PTO, helping get that reestablished in St. Martin. It had kind of, I think, fallen by the wayside and realizes that, you know, being involved in school is the way to go. And then doing her job every day there um, as the director of Info. So she's cybersecurity, strategies, policies, uh, keeping the bank and the customer safe. What's amazing about Pascagoula is what they're doing to renovate and revive downtown Pascagoula. From Main Street, Pascagoula, Suzanne Northrup is next. Yeah, that was the thing that we're, really was impressive about her, her involvement there. They've got um, their festival, Hispanico, that was very popular. So not just going with the, the traditional come downtown festivals, adding a twist to it to involve other populations in the community. Um Really, yeah, downtown Pascagoula is bursting at the seams. I remember after Hurricane Katrina working with David Hardy, the architect, so closely from uh, Eli Gowd Hardy, architects Tommy Allen is the last person on the list. Yeah, Tommy um, has been involved. He's, do, he's working on the uh, Gulfport Jobs Corps Center, been involved in the aquarium. Uh, you know, he's, he's right up in the middle of all of their big projects, uh, been involved with the Gulfport Chamber. Uh, been involved with um, Leadership Gulf Coast, Young Architect Program. So he's he's right up in the middle of all of it, too. Great And there guy. you have it, an incredible list of uh, One Coast Award recipients. And we'll be having them all on the show to share their stories from, from their mouths. So it's a great to recognize them. Adele, thank you for spending some time with me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. God bless you and have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.